everybody, welcome back. I gotta uh, confess something. There is a Lost Isaac run. Uh, I recorded a win earlier today. When I checked the file, it was 1.5 megabytes. I think I double tapped the recording button. I know, it, you know, if you want to put an asterisk on the whole streak <laughs> because of that, by all means. But it is what it is. C889D3XC. It is what it is. I will say, you didn't miss a great and banter-filled episode. Wasn't a bad episode. By the way, let's dump poker chip and get out of here. Wasn't a bad episode, but it was like pretty much uh, an incredible steamroll. I don't think I want it that badly. It was uh, like we had not brimstone Tammy's head, but just like a really, really... Really, really, really strong Tammy's head, like, Tech X run. So, you 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 missed, like, I don't know, I would say maybe a 24-minute a long stomp. But we, you know, it happens. It's, I, I chalk it up to, you know, new PC weirdness. Um, there's always a little bit of a growing, but it's like driving a new car, you know? Here's the thing, if you've never driven, if you maybe you've never purchased a, a, a vehicle, you never swap from one vehicle to another one. But the first stoplight when you're test driving a different car is always going to be a little weird. You're going to go to the stoplight. You've already programmed like your, into your brain when you have to start stopping so that you don't overrun the light. Maybe the brakes in this car are a little touchier. So when you hit the brakes, it seems like, you know, to all your passengers, you're trying to put them through the front windshield. Or maybe they're a little... Uh, a little more tolerant, so when you hit the brakes, it's like, you, unless you're stomping on them, you're not stomping at all. So, it's kind of what a new PC is, right? Is like, right? You know, eventually it'll conform to the shape of the activities that I use it for, but for now, it's kind of like a shoe. You know, it's a little, it's firm, it hasn't adjusted yet to, to what I need it for. Let's get, let's get spicy on the reroll here. Yeah, four keys, even better. <laughs> This run is really good, by the way. It just has one slight negative. The real problem is got right now is no red hearts. That could change very quickly. It could change immediately, even. This is such a weird moment for me, because, like, I, I just finished a stream where I'm, I played Dark Souls 2 for the first time since 2014. To be playing Dark Souls 2 and then Rebirth... It just feels like I've gotten into a time machine. <laughs> it 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 does it doesn't feel like 2020 any longer. Which you know, depending on your perspective, might be a good thing. Ah, screw it. Speed down, range down. Bombs are key. Hey, we got something not really good, but not necessarily bad. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I've traveled back in time a little bit here. It's a little unusual. We'll get over it, yo. Now we're not back in time, because Empty Vessel wasn't in the game back then, I think, but... Um, I'm happy to be playing Dark Souls 2 again. I, w I will say, I've only played like an hour. Um, but it playing Dark Souls 2... I've always been a little bit of a Dark Souls 2 apologist, but I was an apologist of Dark Souls 2 before I played Dark Souls 3. Having played Dark Souls 3 very recently, going back to Dark Souls 2... Oh, yes. Has admittedly been a little bit difficult. <laughs> the hitboxes are a little jacked up. All of the enemy encounters are like uh, ambushes. You might think I'm just recycling stuff from like Dark Souls 2 video essays. The truth is, in my heart of hearts, I don't believe that I have ever watched a video essay on YouTube. Except maybe... Um, I watched that one about how Vancouver never plays itself. How Vancouver is always like a substitute for a generic uh, city in America. I'm not saying American cities are generic. I'm just like, you know. When stuff films up here, they're like, it's Lincoln City. It's not. Sometimes it's New York. Sometimes it's Seattle. But, you know, you get the idea. We don't need those. We definitely don't need those. You got to do something with it, though. I think this this is going to be a stomp in and of itself as well. I mean... Like, we're 
damage wise and HP wise doing fine. I do have to say, I'm, I'm, I have my wife's chat open right now. I just hosted her on Twitch. And all I, I, I don't hear what she's saying. I can only see chat's responses. This is just the window that I had, uh, you know, for my own chat when I was streaming. Here's what I see. Did the toilet break or did Ryan break? High pressure expulsion. What if he's here listening? Monka S. So I, I don't know what they're talking about, but it sounds like uh, my bowel habits are being exposed. <laughs> I've never broken a toilet. However, I will say, and this is... Well, there's a couple of things I want to say. One is, if people... Everybody thinks that, like, if you have just disastrous... Uh, bowel movements and I apologize because I guess this is gross for a lot of people but you know we're gonna talk about it in like the scientific sense we're not gonna like you know gross it up as much as possible but like everybody's like what is your diet I eat like the same things that normal people eat for some reason it just packs more of a punch you know I don't I don't I the doctors have checked me out front to back top to bottom inside and outside all of my markers are, are right. You know, my EKG comes back clean. Like, it's all, it's all gravy. Everybody assumes that... And now we're going to get slightly disgusting, so I apologize. Everybody assumes that if your excrement smells bad, that's a necessary sign of ill health. That might be true in some situations. I'm not going to deny that. Because I don't know. I'm not a doctor, unlike everyone else on the internet. Um, but I would really be more concerned if, like, you took a poop, and then I smelled it, and it smelled delicious. I wouldn't be like, wow, you must be in great health. I would be like, you gotta go see a doctor. That's chocolate syrup. Okay? So I'm, I'm pouring one out here for the people who are like, you know, it, it smells particularly bad and I don't have any idea why, you know? It's not our fault. I think. <laughs> I don't make the rules is all I'm saying. I just, I just follow them. But I, we'll get off of the bathroom topics. And different people, they get annoyed by, or not annoyed, but I mean... You know, they get uh, grossed out by different things. Let's put it that way. Good algaes, clutch algaes. Not everybody gets grossed out by poop. I always feel like I'm on the back foot. Because, like, people... The number one thing that people ask you, as a man at least, when you're like, we're having a baby, is like, oh, are you ready to deal with those diapers? And the answer is like, yeah. Like, I'm not stoked to deal with the diapers. But I'm also like... Forgive me for saying this, but whenever, like, there's dudes out there, or ladies for that matter, but whenever there's dudes out there that are like, yeah, I'm, like, so stoked to have a kid, but I'm just, like, a little grossed out by all the diaper stuff. Like, get over it. It's not that big of a deal. I know that it's just, just get over it forehead is not helpful advice, but, like, you know, I know I've said this before, but I'm way more freaked out by the possibility of, like, raising my child in such a way that they become a terrible adult who is, like, incapable of interacting with other people and has no uh, sense of happiness whatsoever or fulfillment, you know? Like, that's the kind of stuff that'll keep you up at night. A little bit of stinky poop. Everybody poops, dude. Why are you being such a big baby? Oh, my daughter pooped. You know, the bodily fluid is how the baby came into this world in the first place. I just don't understand. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe it's the it's the scientist in me and, you know, I didn't do like, uh, I didn't do my masters or anything like that. But I spent a decent amount of time in the lab. I've done like a lot of dissections and stuff like that. So I, I, I would consider myself to not get grossed out easily. But I'm also like, it's your kid's poop. <laughs> just get over it. You don't have to... I almost feel like some of the diaper stuff is like people are worried that they're going to come across like a weirdo if they say that they're not worried about the diaper stuff or they're not grossed out. I think that like in the human brain, there's almost like a social cue that's like, you got to be super grossed out by this or something's wrong with you. I'm, again, I want to reiterate, it was not my favorite thing to do. It's not like if I had six hours, I'd be like, I'm going to go volunteer down at the diaper changing charity, you know? 
I would rather ladle the soup. If I can do the soup ladling instead, that would be ideal for me, I think. Um, I think we'll just dump that. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, ew, somebody did it for you. Pay it forward, you, you selfish so-and-so. Why, why are you being weird about it? I don't know. I just don't consider it that big of a deal, I guess. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow both of you up. You're wasting my time. You're spoiling my focus. Then we're going to do this. We got a full charge. We really do not need keys. Judgment. <laughs> Hello, Judgment. Um, I think we'll just blow you up, too. I don't know what I'm doing. I guess. Is th this is what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, why would you pick up the consumables? You might get a battery charge. Okay. You can still re-roll the chest. Now we'll pick up the consumables. We got Wheel of Fortune. We got Death Pop. Wheel of Fortune down. Blow it up. This is how you break the game. But I'm not much of a game-breaking sort of guy. So I, I, that's what I'm... You know, let me put it this way. If you gave me the choice, deal with the diapers or deal with the lack of sleep... I would choose dealing with the diapers 100% of the time, full stop. And I know you might be like, you don't know until you've been there. You're right, on a literal sense, but I also know myself better than you know me, just to be quite frank with you. I'm just going to level with you. I don't trust myself with this D20. Give me this smelter, and let's get to smelting. Um, get to smelting. Do -do 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 -do. That's, that's, you know, it's Helter Skelter. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the... I can also deal with the lack of sleep, for that matter. I, I, it's going to be not easy, but again, I was going to tell you, like, billions of idiots have done it. I'm also an idiot, therefore I'm qualified. It's the high order stuff that is way more freaky about having a kid. It's like, you know, the way you behave and interact with that child is going to leave an imprint on them for the rest of their life. People end up screwed up. Or, or, like, disproportionately benefit from having parents, you know? Like, I, I think, uh, or from the way their parents treat them, I should say. You know, I, I've got, uh, I've got friends who w did not have the best upbringing, for sure. And it's kind of, like, impacted them. I'm sure people listening to this are like, yeah, that's, you're describing me right there. Um, so that's, like, it's a lot of responsibility. On the other hand, like, for real, the older I get, the more I'm like, man, my parents, like, crushed it. I literally can't think of, like, a single story from my childhood of, like, my parents behaving in an embarrassing way. My dad got drunk once when I was, like, 10. And my mom razzed him over the story for, like, like to this day. <laughs> we had a, some friends over on, like, uh, we, we lived way out in the country, but on our, uh, on our deck... And I think they stayed awake until like 2 or 3 in the morning just like playing guitar and singing. And my mom has not let him have it, you know. But she she teases him about it to this day. That's like the only story I have of like... It's not even really irresponsible. I mean, they were like enjoying legal fun in their own home. But still, like that's, that's the standard that, that my parents set. <laughs> It's like I don't have one of those stories, and I'm. By the way, I'm kind of bragging. I'm not. I'm. I'm just. I'm happy with it. But I'm just saying this is why. Like, it makes a big difference, right? I don't have a story where it was like, yeah, my dad like forgot to pick me up from school, so I was there for like four hours. You know, I don't have anything like that. My parents were very, uh, you know, they they made me a priority, which I appreciate, and you know, it's a good lesson for me moving forward. I'm just saying, if you screw it up, there's big consequences potentially. I will say. You can kind of, I don't want to say you can screw up with the baby, and it's not as bad. But, like, when do you have to, I mean, have to is a strong thing. But, like, when do you have to stop swearing around a baby? We don't swear that much to begin with. If anything, you didn't hear it from me, but Kate swears more than I do. Um, I th well, we don't have to leave yet. We can spend some more time here. Try to get another trinket. Um, but, like, you don't have to swear or you don't have to not swear around like a two month old it's not like they're subconsciously picking that up and their first word is going to be like oh son of a you know but and i know by the way many people listening to this are probably like words 
I'm not going to teach them that those words have power. So, okay, cool. Like, that's fine. Your kid's gonna be the strange kid who in, like, second grade says the S word. And everybody's like, what's going on in their home life? You know? You're, you're, you're using your child as... This is my personal opinion. You're using your child for your own weird pet cause. And I under, you, you have a right to raise your child more or less however you see fit within reason. But that's like a hill that I'm not going to die on. Like, yeah, when, when somebody says the F word, I'm not offended. But I'm also not... You know, it, it took me a journey to get there. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like teaching my daughter like, yeah, you can just say whatever you want at all times. You see an idiot, call him an effing idiot. Yeah, you, you know, you got to get there yourself. Plus, I don't want to deprive my child of having that experience where they swear around their friends, but they don't swear at home, and then at home they get mad and accidentally swear, and then they have that look on their face like, oh no, my parents are gonna kill me. That's a seminal moment. So I don't want to deprive them of that. I'll leave it at that, because like all the other... If you're watching this, and you're maybe you're watching this with your young kids, I have a lot of sympathy for this, so I'm going to start here, but... I'm not going to talk about any of the other parenting decisions. You know, like related to... Holidays, you know what I mean? Just in case, but I'm like, you know, how am I going to handle that? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided that stuff yet. Probably just the normal way. But it's still, it's pretty early. I mean, it's stuff that's on your brain, though, you know? I mean, we don't have to get as, that's why I, pregnancy is, like, kind of weird, right? Because we, like, have a baby, but we kind of don't have a baby. So I got to think about this stuff, but still, sometimes people will ask you questions that... They seem like shocked that you don't know. They're like, when are you going to let your daughter drink soda? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. She's negative five months. <laughs> Not anytime soon, I'll tell you that much. We, we got a little ways to go. I don't really have an answer to that question to begin with. I, I honestly, I, here's the thing, right? I The same reason that I do not want to give our daughter like a... Uh, you know, a name that's, like, personally significant to me, but the kid might not have that same relationship. Like, I'm not gonna name my daughter, like, you know, Magdalene, you know, just because of the fact that that's a character in Isaac or whatever. Um, like, that's... That's not for me. That that name doesn't belong to me. That name belongs to the child, which is just an individual in waiting, right? Um, for the same reason, I, like... I think you have a response... My, here's my parenting philosophy in a broad sense right now. I think you have a responsibility to raise your child to some extent, I mean, with good values, good morals, etc., etc., but in keeping with, you know, their age and also the norms of society. What do I mean by this ridiculous statement with so many, like, hedges built in? Well, like, I'm, I think swearing is actually, like, a good example, you know? You, as a 35-year-old adult, might think that swearing is, like, or being, like, overly politically correct is, uh, one of those things that's annoying for you. But at the same time, you know, I think if you <clears throat> teach your kid to be, like, crass out of nowhere, um, you know, th that's kind of a selfish decision, in my opinion. It, 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 in my head, that's, you know... Using your child... Oh, I forgot we didn't have D20. That's using your child as almost like a, a protest. But at the same time, you know, you... I guess you got you got your own little bit of autonomy built into it as well. Like, what I'm trying to say is like... Well, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to get out of, like, my real opinion. It's more like... I know how, like, on the show, I talk about stuff in society that I think is, like, nonsense. Like, eating foods with your hands. But this, <laughs> this is not a bad example. At the same time, I might eat pizza with a knife and fork, okay? But I'll probably teach our daughter that pizza is a hand food. Because when they're at, like, their friend's birthday party, I don't want them to go, Miss mm, Simmons, can I have some cutlery, please? And then be made fun of it for, like, you know... A decade. I, as an adult, I'm capable of making my own decisions. 
If anybody makes fun of me for using uh, a fork and a knife to eat a slice of pizza, I just laugh at them, because I'm like, you're getting your hands dirty over a sense of pride, which makes no sense to me. I would rather get a fork and a knife dirty than get my hands dirty. If you disagree, that's fine. Just remember, in this hypothetical example, you're the person who threw the first stone. I didn't, I didn't go, whoa, you're picking that thing up with your hands? Weird. You know, I know that that's the norm. For me, and for Kate as well, we, we eat pizza with a knife and a fork a lot of the time. Because it keeps our hands from getting greasy. People are very protective of that, by the way. And I'm telling you, I, I hate to be the bearer of, like, you know, not really bad news, I guess. But, you know, I, I really feel like the reason so many people eat their pizza... Or, let me rephrase. It's convenient to eat your pizza with your hands. Don't get me wrong. And if you're on the street, that's the, one of the great things about pizza. It's a food you can enjoy with any utensil, basically. You could eat a p slice of pizza with chopsticks if you had to. You'd probably rather just eat it with your hands in that situation. I would agree. I would agree on that one for sure. However, I think the reason people are so attached to the idea of using their hands for it and, and get offended when they hear that some people use a knife and a fork, and there are dozens of us, um, is a Chuck E. Cheese commercial that I remember from when I was a kid where, like, two clearly out-of-touch elderly people are eating pizza with a knife and a fork and then this cartoon rat rides in on a skateboard and goes you know what are you doing you old fogies and then the kids like run in in that fast motion that all kids commercials ran in in the 80s and 90s and like pick up the pizza and just eat it with their hands and like smear it all over their faces Chuck E. Cheese got in your head that's all I'm saying all I'm saying is Chuck E. Cheese got in your head I really believe in a lot of situations well, here's the thing. Again, I, I have to reiterate this in the most eloquent way possible, in the most clear way possible. Yeah, I smelt it left hand. Get over it. It was on purpose, kind of. If you eat pizza using your hands, that's fine. We can get along, you know? I have no problem with you eating pizza with your hands. The reason I'm defensive is because anytime I say I eat pizza with a knife and a fork, people who eat with their hands, most of the time they don't go, oh, that's cool, different strokes for different folks. They go, are you insane? What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? So this is built on, like, you know, years and years of having this discussion, particularly, you know, on Twitch. I'm a fork and knife guy. The reason I'm a fork and knife guy, I've said it many times. Here's the thing. I do think you can wash your hands while you eat a, or after you eat a slice of pizza or a couple slices of pizza, but it means that you are gated into you into eating that slice of pizza before anything else happens. You know what I mean? With a knife and fork, you can cut a bite, take a bite, cut a bite, take a bite. You could take 10 minutes to go, you know, into the other room. Maybe you get a phone call, you can take the phone call, you don't have to wash your hands, you know? You're, you're kind of like just good to go because you didn't get your hands dirty in the first place. If you're eating a slice of pizza, here's what most of you do, and you're not going to admit it because it gives you the moral low ground in this situation. But you pick up the pizza, you take a bite, and then you wipe your hand on your jeans. If you want to do that, that's fine. I'm a jean wiper myself in some situations, much to my wife's chagrin. But stop acting like somehow that's the best way to do it. Your pants smell like a pizza hut. Now that's a good thing in my eyes, but not everybody feels the same way. But moreover, again, if you want to... I don't think it's gross to eat a slice of pizza with your hands. So stop suggesting it says something about my personality that I, I eat mine with a knife and a fork. All it says about my personality is that I've thought it through. I've realized what, what's best for me. Krampus, just, just chill, okay? Like... You're not getting out of here. You might as well just relax. So anyway, that's my TED Talk. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Hello, Tomo. We built a... Well, I say we built. I'll be honest. Kate built it. Um, a cat tree. We put it in my office so the cats maybe feel compelled to spend more time here. Which is like... I mean, why do we care? Well, because it's nice for me to have the cats around, for one. And then secondarily, like, the cats like me, but the, there's no place for them to sit in my office, so they just come in and meow at me. Now, it's a super nice cat tree. Tomo's like, he's chilling in his little loft right now. 
taking a little snooze. Reminds me of living in our old place where they used to, you know, sleep in the boxes while I recorded a bunch of videos. Anyway, I guess here's what I'm trying to say. I, th I think the more I've thought about it, the more I've realized that as a, as a parent, in there's no way to get around this. Your child is going to resemble you, not just physically, obviously, but in terms of personality. Especially, like, the older I get, the more I'm like, I, I see my myself and my dad all the time. He's, like, so impatient when he's building stuff. Uh... Is the same as me. Like if I if I hammer a nail and it doesn't work, I'm like this thing's freaking stupid. <laughs> I don't know why hammering a nail wouldn't work, but like, you know, I I'll do that. And I think it's a very common thing, and not just a man thing, but like you know, I'll, I'll look at like IKEA instructions, and there will be two screws that are like you know, one will be like one third longer than the other one, and I'll just use one of them and be like, ah, it doesn't matter. And then when I get to like the end of the thing. I'm like, turns out it matters a great deal, because now I would only have the wrong kinds of screw left, and I'm like, well, why would they make it like that? You know, I'm like blaming them for no reason. Like, the instructions are actually clear, but I, cho I, I thought I was smarter, and I was like, no, we'll just do it my way. But I think you have, like, an obligation to raise your child in such a way that, sure, they're going to take influence from you. But they're not just like a little carbon copy of you in school, because that's like real weird energy. We all knew kids in our school that was like, you know... I mean, kids inherit their parents' opinions on a lot of things for a long time. And then when they're teenagers, you can tell the parents' opinion because it's the exact opposite of what the child's opinion is. Oh, my mom hates milk. I love milk. Best beverage ever made. But, um... I don't know. I, I guess I don't. I, I don't have a better point there. I think I'm. I hope I'm getting my point across here. I went to school with a lot of kids, and I went to school with a few miniature adults, if that makes sense. And I was always like, man, you got like a, <laughs> you've got an incredibly uh, verbose position on Roe versus Wade for a fourth grader. How did that happen? That's bizarre. Not too many fourth graders I know have that much of a depth of knowledge about American Supreme Court cases. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. You get where I'm getting at with this one. I think. Yeah, probably. How you doing, Tomo? I, I'm very flattered. Tomo is not asleep. He is merely uh, watching me with his eyes partly closed. Which is really the way that most of you are watching me as well. So it makes perfect sense, I suppose. Okay. Well, uh, let's just get this out of the way. Should not have smelted the left hand. That's a lesson that, you know, we've, we've learned couple dozen times. But now it's really starting to sink in. <laughs> you know what? Sure. Let's let's smelt this up. This isn't doing the little things right. But on the other hand, I think having fun is doing the little things right too. When when your run is already relatively sorted. By the way, thank God we got Blue Baby's only friend. Were it not for Blue Baby's only friend, I don't think we'd be in, like, a terrible position, but we definitely would be in a worse position. Like, our, our, our damage is... Well, you know, I'll level with you. With Lump of Coal, it might actually be better to just shoot. And maybe I've been nerfing myself for the whole run. By not using it. But whatever. That's minutia. The point is, we're, we're... I mean, I, I haven't thought about anything that's happened on this run for probably seven floors. <laughs> we have been so ahead of the game, basically since floor one, um, that I've pretty much just been talking nonsense. I, I really remember very little mechanically of what happened. Once we picked up the relic, I was like, 
you know, the conscious part of my brain that puts stuff from short-term memory into long-term memory is like, well, it looks like you're not gonna need me, so I'm out of here for the day. And I said, wait, I need you for Monster Train later. That's, that's a joke. I can't record any more Monster Train tonight. My voice is already a little tired and sore. And uh, every Monster Train video is an hour and 20 minutes long right now, so... It's gonna come down. Keep in mind, there used to there was a time when I uploaded Slay the Spire in parts. Eventually, you just know what every card does, for the most part, and you go, we don't need to read every single card every single time. We'll get there. We're not there yet. I mean, it's only like I've, I've recorded seven episodes. So we're not there yet. We'll get there one day. Maybe. I mean, I keep falling into this trap where I'm like... And like, after Stone Shard, I was like, we're going to make the series shorter. And then I played 45 episodes of One Step from Eden. And I was like, we're really going to make the series shorter now. And then I played... Uh, four episodes of Mario Maker and immediately got into Monster Train and was like, oh, I could play this for months. <laughs> Stop making your game so compelling. I need you to make your games worse so I can cycle them through faster without feeling slightly guilty. Oh, he chonky. I will take my spirit heart. We shouldn't need it, but, you, you know, better safe than Suri. That's not a joke at Suri's expense. That's a joke about people think Canadians say sorry. Uh, strangely. And by strangely, I mean, like, I'll, I'll say it. 45% of my audience, I apologize because this joke is at your expense, but the other 45% knows what I'm talking about. When you say English words, not in the way that Americans say them, they laugh at you. And then they look to you as if you're going to also laugh with them because you're like, yeah, I do say things weird. But really, we might give you a polite chuckle and we're like, everybody says everything differently in the world and we don't always want to strictly conform to the American, you know, pronunciation standards. Anyway, um, I maintain that people think Canadians say sorry uh, weirdly because we say it more than Americans, which is uh, never. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you watched all 32 minutes and 26 seconds, I'm going to assume you did. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, click that button. Helps me out. Apart from that, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.